So who doesn't love a treasure hunt? I certainly did before I watched this film twice. This is Andy Sidoris's Enemy Gold. I'm Jay Harang and I've wasted hours of my life watching terrible films. You should subscribe. So this film starts with a flashback to the Civil War. The narrator, whose only job is to read the script into the microphone, has the most boring voice imaginable. Journal entry. I'm Lieutenant Daniel McKay. We have engaged the enemy in battle at Pleasant Hill. Both sides have lost a lot of men. We are realizing how futile this war has been. That's quite enough of that. Yep. All you need to know is that these two Confederate soldiers buried some gold somewhere. Thank you. Cut to the present day and this hot woman is getting into her car. She's on her way to break into this hotel room. Little does she know that there are two agents in there waiting for her. One of whom is wearing just a leather waistcoat. Freeze. <laughs> what? That was absolute sh**. Damn, it's you. Who? Becky Midnight. You know this lady? Hell, I trained her in the academy in Virginia four years ago. This is Agent Chris Cannon. He's apparently taught Becky Midnight everything she knows, making him responsible for action like this. Good work. I beg to differ. The guy in the camouflage vest is Chris's partner, Mark Austin. Becky has been sent down to Dallas, because in Chris's last report to headquarters, he said things were getting pretty hot down there. So she's there as backup. This is perfect timing, as Chris and Mark are just about to go on a very important bust. Who the hell is she? He's literally just told you. Anyway, Becky has said she needs a minute to get ready, but she's planted a bug on Mark and listens to what they're saying from the next room. She's obviously one hell of an agent. I'm not sure how that's obvious, but never mind. We then get a couple of minutes of Becky getting changed into what is apparently a more appropriate outfit for a drugs bust. She's also going to need this crossbow. The tip of this arrow explodes three seconds after penetration. So they get to this farm where these guards are practicing fighting. Becky is going in first. I wonder what special skills she's gonna bring to the table. Darling, this is private property. Awfully oh, hot out here. <laughs> So this has worked, and one guy sends the other to get her some water while he stares at her, allowing Chris and Mark to enter around the back. This Mark is the least believable agent ever. He looks like a child running around playing guns. Anyway, they find all these watermelons are hollowed out and packed full of drugs. Bingo. Chris is like, right, you're under arrest, but they're like, yeah, that's not happening. <laughs> The two escaping are Rip and Slash. Slash is the one with the shitter hair. But it's okay because Becky blows up their truck with her new crossbow. But hang on, who's this? This is Dixon. He's in charge of the local division of whatever law enforcement agency they all work for. And he tells them they can't just go around killing people without a warrant. We take our orders directly from Washington Command. We take our orders from Special Agent Noble. By the way, just who in the hell are you? Special Agent Becky Midnight. <laughs> Dixon's like, right, we'll take over from here. So he takes Rip and Slash with him. Back at what I assume is Chris's house, which obviously has a hot tub, Mark and Chris are telling Becky how Dixon took over the division from Agent Noble, and he hates them because they don't recognize his authority. Our loyalty is still with Agent Noble. Cut to Washington, D.C., and here's Ava Noble. Oh, I see. Dixon's filed a report with Internal Affairs, and Ava has to go to headquarters to review the charges against them. Then we meet Santiago, who runs this strip club. It turns out he owned the watermelon farm. Dixon is on Santiago's payroll, and he was supposed to keep the agents away from his business. Dixon says he's going to get Rip and Slash out of jail, and at the very least, Chris, Mark, and Becky will be suspended. The very least I want is them dead. He's like, sorry, but the best I can do at the moment is give you this thing that will allow you to monitor the agent's conversations. Santiago didn't enjoy that conversation, so he goes into the shower to look for the strippers. What's up? I am. And then they bang. Ava is at headquarters now, and the worst actor we've seen yet, who I assume is supposed to be a boss, tells her that the agents are suspended. And I will leave it up to you to notify the three agents. Ava then passes this message on to Chris, while getting undressed, who's about to go out to dinner with Mark and Becky. Their suspension is probably going to last at least a week, so Ava tells them to go camping. Okay. 
Mark suggests taking the dirt bikes to Big Pine Forest. Chris and I used to do this when we were kids. We would go in search of Quantrill's gold. Quantrill was a Confederate general during the Civil War. Legend has it that some of his men buried a large amount of stolen gold in the woods. We would look for it every summer. Right, so there's the link to the Civil War stuff at the start. Great. They're like, yeah, but it's just a stupid old legend. Then Chris and Becky dance and Mark looks at Chris like, ooh, you dog. Not sure how Mark gets home, but Chris and Becky go back to the house and then they bang. Here's a new character. We don't know who this is yet, but she's in leathers listening to heavy rock, so she must be brilliant. At Santiago Strip Club, Rip and Slash have come to see him. We came as soon as we get out of jail. They're like, we'll kill those agents for you. No! This is gonna call for an expert in such matters. Santiago tells them that he has an expert assassin arriving tonight and they'll be able to see a real professional in action. Oh, look, it's her. This is Jewel Panther. What? Yes, Jewel Panther. And she shows us how hard she is by dealing with this doorman who comes onto her. Why is your nose bigger than your dick? <laughs> so Santiago tells her to kill the agents and she agrees. Dixon comes in and he's like, you can't just kill three agents. Santiago's like, yes, I can. He's like, oh, okay. So the suspended agents are about to leave and Chris asks why Becky has packed her crossbow. She's like, it's just for protection. You two pack guns. Well, just a couple of small pistols in case we see a snake or something. Well, what if we run into a bear or something? Mark's like, whatever, there aren't any bears in those woods. Chris calls Ava and tells her where they're going and the exact route they'll be taking to get there. But Rip and Slash are listening in on the listening device Dixon gave Santiago. When Santiago finds out where they're going, he's like, good, they'll be in the middle of nowhere so we can kill them. So the agents have arrived and they're talking about how safe it is in the woods. Nothing bad could ever happen to you out here. But Becky is unaware that Rip and Slash will be scouting the area for them in a helicopter so that Santiago and Jewel Panther can get to them on their quad bike and kill them. Watch out for those bears. <laughs> Very funny. No, that doesn't happen, but this does. <coughs> Luckily, it's just an old skeleton, but what's this? It's an old journal. We just found the treasure map to Quantrill's gold. Mark remembers there was a hunter lodge not far from where they are, so they plan to camp there. I'm going to check in with Ava before we head out. So Chris tells Ava about the map and where they plan to stay. If you're wondering why Chris is calling his boss when he's supposed to be on vacation and he's suspended, you need to stop thinking about that. Obviously, Santiago has overheard this on the listening device. Of course. And more good news for Santiago, Rip and Slash have found him a boat, which he apparently knew he needed, despite having no idea where the agents were. Honestly, this is so bad. Anyway, the problem with this boat is that some park rangers are using it, but we don't need to worry about the park rangers as Jewel Panther is going to approach them in a bikini, presumably to get them to agree to hand the boat over. Oh no, she just kills them. <laughs> Why bother with the bikini then? None of this makes any sense. Anyway, they've got this boat. At this point, who even cares? This is shit. Oh look, the lodge has an outdoor shower. Pretty certain Becky's gonna be in that later. But oh no, they've been spotted. So Santiago is gonna go and kill them in the morning, then collect the gold. It'll be like taking candy from a baby. <laughs> <laughs> It's morning now and Becky heads for the shower. After a couple of minutes of that, Rip and Slash are gonna go in. They're eager to get back in Santiago's good books after the whole watermelon farm incident. So Rip gets on Becky's quad bike and shoots at Mark when he comes out. Chris and Mark get on their bikes and chase him, but Becky is still naked, so she'll be staying at the lodge. As you can imagine, this bike chase goes on and on and on. Until... Of all the trees in this forest, the one that's taken Rip's head off just happens to be the one with the Civil War knife stuck in it, meaning that's where the gold is buried. Gold! But they've got more pressing matters, because they recognise Rip and remember that he had a partner. So off they go back to the lodge where Slash is approaching a still naked Becky. Hello, Agent Lady. Remember me? Ah. Need a minute to reload. What? Why is he saying, I need a minute to reload? This is ludicrous. Anyway. <laughs> Santiago and Jewel have heard the explosion and head to the lodge, but Chris and Mark have already got there to check on Becky. We see their concern from this camera angle. Cut to Ava, who's gone to Dixon to ask him why he got her agent suspended. Conveniently, while she's in his office, Chris calls her with another holiday update. He feels... <laughs> 
He tells them that the guys from the drug bus tried to kill them and they're close to finding the lost gold. gold. What gold? Shh. Ava has decided to come join them, so Chris gives her the exact coordinates. So Chris, Mark and Becky are off to get the gold. Dixon has convinced Ava to let him tag along with her to the woods, so he's taking her in this boat. And here's the gold! But they're not alone. My, my, my. It's a regular party out here. Is it a regular party? Is it even a party? And if it was, I'd say it was pretty irregular. What a stupid thing to say. Anyway. Mmm. Look at all the pretty gold. Some child goes like, okay, you cunts. Help us carry this gold and bring a spade because we're going to need it to bury you. Becky then tries this. Bodies. Some tell goes like, yeah, that's fun, but I've got a gun. And I suggest you drop that gun. The agents are like, yeah, Ava's here, we're safe, but no. I'm afraid it's you who better drop it. Oh, Dixon's been playing for the other team. Wow, Mark. That's brilliant. Santiago and Dixon plan to split the gold, but the agents have planted seeds of doubt in Dixon's mind. With you out of the way, there's more gold for him. You weren't planning to double cross me. Remember we were partners in crime. You're not gonna fall for that old bit, are you? But Jewel has had enough of this. <laughs> the agents knock Santiago and Jewel out, grab half the gold and run away. There's a load of shooting around trees until Santiago and Jewel get to the chopper. Oh look, Ava's got the crossbow. <laughs> Mark has been kind enough to let Ava use his shower. It's the least I could do for the woman who saved my life today. And then they bang. Back in the hot tub, we find out that Ava is taking Dixon's job and the team is back together again. Yeah, and that's the end of the films. So until next time. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe and check out this other video. Thank you.